This is Alin from Javelin playing with the new toys in SOLIDWORKS 2014. Today I will show you a thing of beauty, the new Pathland Dimension introduced by SOLIDWORKS 2014. So let's take a look at this uh, case study. I have a wire that's being coiled. I know the overall length of the wire, so what's going to happen as I'm trying to uncoil it? Is the free end of the wire going to move down? Or if I coil it back, is it going to move up? Well. Let's give it a try. So with Instant 3D on, the only thing I need to do is select the Helix feature and let's change this angle and see what's happening with the end, free end of uh, this wire. And as you can see, it actually works as expected. How did I do this? Well, I took advantage of the new path land dimension introduced by SOLIDWORKS 2014. So let me show the feature tree in the flat view. So this option, as you remember, has been introduced by SOLIDWORKS 2013. So now I can see it in historical manner. Uh, and the key here is with sketch number two, which was the path for that sweep. So if I did the sketch, and if I make the spiral visible, you can see that this spline here, it's actually was obtained by converting the entity from pretty much I selected the spiral and I did a convert entity. Not a, after that, I have just a, a line that's, that's going down. I, and I define the path length, pretty much the length of these two entities, as being 30. So allow me to do this again. I'm just going to delete this uh, path. So the key is right here under the smart dimension. So what you're looking for is the path length dimension. And you're going to select the two segments. Segment 1 and segment 2. And as you can see right now, I have it as 30. If I want to change it, it's just a matter of typing here a different number. Let's say uh, 25 and becomes a little bit too small. Let's try to go up back up to 30. Allow me to show you another great reason for using the path length. So uh, I'll just start with a very simple uh, rectangle. And let's say I would like to define this sketch using only the path length. Of course, I need a relation between the height and the length of the rectangle, right? Uh, if the relation is very simple, let's say this is going to be half of this, uh, you can try to use maybe um, some construction geometry. So I'm just going to go and define these two segments as being equal to each other and even equal to to this. So now if I'm moving this, no matter what, this is going to be half of that. So you know where I'm going from here. I'm just going to define my path length and I'm going to select this chain. So all these segments as being the path. And the dimension, let's say, is going to be 20. Or let's say it's going to be 10 or 5. So as you can see, no matter what I'm doing here, um, this path length defines the whole sketch and the proportions are being kept. Now let's try to do this again. But this time I'm just going to try to create a much more complex relation between this and that. So between the height and the length um, where adding construction geometry might not be feasible. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add here a dimension. Let's say really the dimension is not important because I'm going to set it up as being driven. So this is going to be a driven dimension. The other dimension, the one that I have here, is going to be driving, but it's going to be dependent by this guy. So I'm just going to add an equation. This is going to be the length divided by 3.145, for example. And now let's add the path. So another path length dimension. I'm going to select everything. So select chain, and I'm going to add here, I'm going to change the dimension, the path length. So 30. Notice how the proportion stays. If I make this instead of 30, 20, this changes to be one third of this. So this is actually quite spectacular. It allows me to use the path length and specify an equation between the, the other two sides of uh, the rectangle and everything gets recalculated quite nicely. 
Hope you liked it. Thank you.